Hi everyone, I'm Zunzo with Aquarium Co-op and today I have my colleague Irene with me and we're gonna talk about hang on back filters versus sponge filters. So I think Irene's gonna kick us off with why she likes hang on backs. Thanks, Enzo. Well, I think when most beginners start in the aquarium hobby, they usually just use the default filter that comes with whatever aquarium or fish tank kit that they got. However, when they start to buy their next filter, because they realize there are better things out there, usually the one they get is the hang on back or HOB filter. It's commonly sold in pet stores. It's got everything com that you need comes in one single box and it comes with very clear instructions. You just go down the steps, one, two, three, you put everything together, you put the filter media in, and then you plug it in, and then the filter starts working. A lot of hobbyists, not just beginners, really like it because the filter is pretty attractive in terms of there's not a lot of footprint that takes up in the aquarium. Most of the filter stays outside of the aquarium, and then you have just like one little intake tube that's pretty easy to hide with some kind of decoration or tall background plant. Plus it's really easy to clean. All you have to do is just take that filter basket out, take the filter media, kind of rinse it around in some old tank water and then put it back in. So you don't even have to put your hands in the aquarium in order to maintenance your filter. Now, my favorite part of the hang on back filter is the customization. I typically get the AquaClear hang on backs, which come with three different kinds of filter media. You've got sponge for the mechanical filtration, then bio rings for the biological filtration, and then activated carbon for chemical filtration. Now, I personally don't use activated carbon most of the time, so I will just take it out. And because I can customize the filter media basket, instead I'll cut out kind of a rectangle size pad of fine filter floss, and that way it can do extra polishing of my aquarium water. If you've seen little particles floating around, hang on back filters are really good at getting rid of them. Other customizations that people have done in the past include, let's say you want to have live plants in your aquarium because of the great ability to suck up those nitrates and other nitrogen waste compounds, but you have fish like goldfish or African cichlids that like to eat plants, some people will stick, let's say a pothos plant or a lucky bamboo into the filter media compartment of their hang on back. And that way it can grow in that basket without the roots getting nibbled on by the fish. Another idea would be if you don't like, let's say your heater in the aquarium, you find it hard to hide for some reason. If you have a bigger hang on back filter, you could actually also put that in the filter media basket. And so that way the heater is heating up water and then it actually gets dispersed pretty evenly throughout the aquarium because you're at the source of where the, the current or the flow in the aquarium is being created. I'm gonna pass it back to you Zenzo though. Convince me why sponge filters are the superior filter. <laughs> If you have a lot of aquariums, in my opinion, sponge filters are the way to go because they are extremely cost effective. This is why you'll see pretty much every fish store, every wholesaler, every type of large fish operation, they use sponge filters because of this cost effective benefit. They're very inexpensive, but what really makes them cost effective is that you can run multiple filters in multiple aquariums from one source of power, which is their air pump. So if you have more than one aquarium, if you have four or five or 20 in one area, you can run one air pump or a couple of air pumps and power all of your sponge filters. Another great thing about sponge filters, there's no moving parts. There's no impeller, there's no motor. All you have is a piece of plastic and sponge in your aquarium that's running some bubbles and it's really nothing that's gonna break down or wear out over time. You can have sponge filters running for years and they are as good as the first day that you bought them. So they're really very simple. You might wanna have a gentle flow. With a sponge filter, it's very easy. All you need is a very inexpensive, simple inline valve to turn the air down a little bit, slow the bubbles, and you can have a very gentle flow. This might be important if you have, let's say, a beta tank, or if you have some fish that are very sensitive to higher flow, and that you don't want to get the have the fish blown around the tank by some powerful filter. It really does allow you to kind of customize the flow. You can crank that thing up and have some, you know, pretty turbulent bubbles going, but you can also turn it way down and have it very gentle, which is a great benefit for a lot of people. 
Sponge filters are pretty easy to clean as well. There may be the difference between the hang on back and a sponge is you're gonna get your hands wet or your arm wet because you're gonna have to reach into the aquarium and pull out the sponge filter. But again, it's very simple, it's right there. You just take it out of the aquarium, rinse it off, give it a squeeze and put it right back into your tank. It only takes a couple of minutes to clean a sponge filter and you don't have to do it very often depending on the type that you use. So I happen to use our aquarium co-op coarse sponge filters and I actually have some that I've never cleaned. Um, it's just the fact that there's a low bio load tank. It's a great type of filter to maintain. You don't have a lot of issues with them when it comes to cleaning, maintaining, taking care of them. Very simple. Now there's lots of great benefits, but the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is the ability to move them. They're very portable. Maybe you have of an established aquarium and you've got a couple of sponge filters in there. And like a lot of you fish keepers, you wanna have another aquarium. So you set up another brand new tank, it's a glass box, it's empty. You fill it with, with dechlorinated water and put your plants in and all that. All you have to do is take your already seasoned and cycled sponge filter, take it out of that existing aquarium, plop it in the new aquarium, and just like that, you've got a cycled filter that's ready to go to where you can start adding some inhabitants. So it's very versatile, very portable, just a great overall filter. So that's why I'm on Team Sponge Filter. Uh, with that, you know, Irene did tell us some great attributes about hang on the backs, um, but I'm sure there's some things that maybe are not so great. So let's hear from Irene about those. I will admit every filter out there has its pros and its cons, and I do have, some cons with my hang on back filter. So I'm gonna rank them kind of in order of severity. The first one would be just the way the filter runs. It has a little waterfall that kind of pours water back into the aquarium after it filters it. And some people, you know, depending on who you are, they don't like the sound of the waterfall, which is gonna get louder and louder if, for example, the evaporation in the tank occurs and then that water line continues to drop, that water has further to drop and then therefore that waterfall sound is gonna be louder. Very easy solution to that is to just refill, top off that tank or do a water change. And that way, the closer the water line is to the filter, the less you're gonna hear that noise. Another thing is I did mention that, you know, your hang on back filter, everything comes in the box. You don't need to get anything else. That's not exactly true because you know how there's that intake tube that goes into the aquarium? Well, that intake tube has usually several large slits or holes in it so that it can intake water. Well, a lot of times those holes are large enough that whether it's dead leaves, sometimes shrimp, snails, and fish can get caught and sucked up into the motor and that will, you know, oftentimes destroy the motor. I've had cases where I had sand substrate once and then sand particles got into it and I ended up having to replace the motor unit of the hang on back filter. Not good. There is another easy fix for that, which is to get a pre-filter sponge. So at Aquarium Co-op, we have these coarse pre-filter sponges, which I like better because as Zenzo mentioned before, it can continue to filter and draw water through it without getting clogged up as easily. Not only does it block things like baby fish, betafins, dead leaves from getting into the motor, but also it acts as additional mechanical filtration and biological filtration so that it will block any of these major items from going into your filter media so your filter media doesn't have to be cleaned as often. Yeah, I do wanna jump in real quick and say, yes, having a pre-filter on your hang on the back is great for all of those reasons. And one more reason is it's also kind of like a feeding trough. So, you know, you have your fish food and you pour your fish food in the aquarium and the water's mixing around with the pre-filter it'll get caught on the pre-filter sponge and your fish can still access it, pick from it, and kind of come back later for a snack. If you have shrimp or snails, they'll come and find it and graze off of it. So just a, a great addition to basically solving a problem with the hang on back. The third problem for hang on back filters would be during power outages, they are not my favorite filter. So that happens in my area quite a bit and the problem that I see with many hang on backs is they don't self prime meaning what happens in the power outage is it loses power and all of the water in that hang on back flows into the tank and then sometime down the road when the electricity comes back on again it will try to basically start running again but because there's no water in the filter media compartment of the filter it cannot create flow again. And so basically it just sits there and you hear this horrible grinding sound after you work when you come back home and it goes and it's basically the motor has been running dry and burning itself out the whole time. And so I have definitely burned out a hang on back filter or two because I was at work or I was out on vacation and I didn't realize it had tried to basically restart itself and it couldn't. 
Describe again the sound that it makes, Irene. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> that is a problem and I've had that problem before with uh, you know this hang on backs not self priming which is actually another plus for sponge filters because if there is a power outage all you need to do is get a battery backup or a power bank or have one of our battery backup air pumps and your sponge filters will continue to operate being driven by air, which takes very little energy for hours and hours in the event of a power outage. So another score for the sponge filter. <laughs> I love it. You have to jump into my cons and <laughs> promote the sponge filter again. And I will mention that is, so the problem with the hang on back filter being empty of water during a power outage is during that time, any beneficial bacteria that was growing on your filter media, if it's out of water for too long or there's very little water in there and it runs out of oxygen, that beneficial bacteria could die. So, and that wouldn't happen with a sponge filter usually because they're still in a much larger volume of water that has more dissolved oxygen in it. So if this does happen to you, make sure before you turn back on the hang on back filter that you maybe go ahead and rinse out any additional gunk that may have built up, any dead beneficial bacteria in some old tank water and clean it out before you basically start your hang on back filter again. My final bad story about hang on back filters would be they have totally flooded my floors before. And unfortunately, the floors that my that aquarium was on were hardwood floors and I didn't notice it because it was such a small trickle. Like I didn't even feel anything, but clearly something was getting down to the hardwood floors because they started buckling over the time, over time. And me and my husband were racing around trying to find out what happened. Well, I had apparently gotten lazy about maintenancing and cleaning the filter media in that hang on back and it had started to swell with debris so much so that the lid started lifting up and then it started the filter media started touching the wall next to the hang on back filter which then ended up drawing water over i don't know how many months all the way to our floor which is terrible and again that's something that wouldn't happen with certain other kinds of filters but corey our founder does have a hack for that which is when you're setting up your hang on back filter just set it up that so that well a make sure it's not touching any kind of wall but b uh, set it up so that maybe get an extra chunk of sponge and then put it where it, this hang on back filter kind of rests against the tank so that the hang on back filter is slightly tilted toward the tank. And that way, if your filter media starts swelling and is too full of gunk because you were like me and lost track of time, if it starts overflowing with water, it pours back into the tank instead of backwards out toward the wall or the ground. Okay, I have admitted all the faults of my particular filter. Zenzo, there's got to be some cons for sponge filters that you can talk about. Yes, there is. So despite the sponge filter being the all conquering filter when it comes to aquariums, there are a few <laughs> maybe things to consider. I'm not gonna say they're negatives or cons, but there are things to consider. One of those is that they take up space inside of the aquarium. Unlike a hang on back filter or a canister filter or some other types of filters, a sponge filter lives and resides entirely inside of your aquarium. So it's gonna take up some real estate. Now, depending on the size of your tank, that might not be a big deal. But if you are working with a very small aquarium, you are gonna to have to, to take that into consideration and most likely use a very small sponge filter or look at some other type of filtration. The other thing when it comes to having that filter inside of your aquarium is for some people, they're unsightly. So for me, I don't mind it. In fact, sometimes I like to look at the sponge filter. I like kind of that mechanical look. Or if it is something that I do want to hide, I'll just make sure that I put a plant in front of it or some decorations or a rock or something. So that is something to consider. For some people, they don't like the noise. It could be the noise from the air pump itself. And then there's also the bubbles. Now, I personally really like to hear the bubbles. To me, it's kind of soothing, but some people don't want to hear that popping of the bubbles at the surface. Now, there are some ways around it. What I like to do is I like to use our sponge filters and I put an air stone inside the sponge filter and I tighten it down to where I get finer bubbles. And when those finer bubbles are drawn through the filter and they go to the top, when they pop, they're much smaller. So I don't hear that noise that you would with larger bubbles. 
So I think that's it. You know, sponge filters, hang on back filters, they both have a lot of benefits. They both have a couple of things that you might want to consider if you're still unsure about which one to choose. But ultimately, I think you're not going to be wrong with any of them. I like sponge filters and I like hang on back filters. In fact, I have some. I have some extras that are kind of ready and waiting. I've got a couple of projects in mind where I might use one. So anyway, I think you can't go wrong. I mean, what do you think? I agree wholeheartedly. You know, there's a, each filter is really good at a certain thing. And me personally, I will admit, I actually technically run sponge filters in almost all of my aquariums because of the ease of use and reliability. However, recently I did bring out my hang on back from the basement because I had a situation where this toxic chemical got into one of my tanks. I didn't want to tear the whole thing down. So I just stuffed the filter media basket full of activated car carbon and purigen resin, basically chemical filtration. And it was able to draw out all these chemicals. Not that you couldn't, there isn't a solution or way to do that with sponge filters. It's just easier. And and in that case, the hang on back filter is a better tool. If you're still not sure whether you're on team hang on back or team sponge filter, not to worry because I've got a video over here on the top five most popular aquarium filters on the market to see which one is right for you.